Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual topics, especially on the path of knowledge. And we conduct the program from this satsang. And today we are going to start with the test of Kapil. So I am going to ask Kapil some questions. Before that, I want to know whether he is ready for the test. Yes, good. Yeah, yeah. So you will get 10 questions. If you get 50% or more marks, you will be sent to the step number 4 of the program. And uh, everybody should simply listen. After that, we are going to discuss the answers and we'll take your questions. So these are your questions. You can start now. So question number one, how does the path of knowledge augment existing knowledge of a seeker? Path of knowledge works by removing the ignorance um, and the ignorance is uh, uh, everyone thinks that they are uh, body and mind. So they, um, so question is how does path of knowledge augment existing knowledge of a seeker? So it, it removes the ignorance. So what seeker has accumulated so far, what seeker thinks that it's a knowledge, um, it's the ignorance and uh, path of knowledge removes that part. Question number two, what is the sub goal on this path? So path of knowledge, we remove ignorance. There isn't anything we gain. There, there are uh, there isn't anything gained part of that. Uh, so th there are no sub goals. Um, the, the the main goal of the path of knowledge is to understand your true nature, which is the uh, experiencer. What is the difference between knowledge and perception? So uh, knowledge is uh, when the experiences are arranged in memory um, through uh, logic and, um, and and the experiences are interrelated. And the perception is when um, perception is th uh, through the input of the senses. Uh, you perceive what uh, what is not there, um, so the perception is of illusion. How can we say experiencer is omnipresent when it is invisible? So, experiencer is the aspect of the existence which is witnessing the experiences because. There is no, uh, because it's non-local, um, it, there is no start and end of the experiencer. Uh, um, so it, it means that um, experiencer is everywhere, which is omnipresent. And through the example uh, or, the, uh, or the metaphor, we can say when we look at the milk and the water, when they are mixed together, uh, we know that there are two things in there, but the uh, we can't in individually identify milk and water. Uh, so that that way, experiencer is permeating through all the experience. Um, the second part of that, when it is invisible, uh, so experiencer is not an object. We cannot perceive as an object with uh, uh, qualities of the object. Uh, so uh, visibility is the property and, and because the experiencer it cannot be described through the those qualities, uh, it's not right to say uh, it's invisible. What is the role of a person in knowing the experiencer? What is the role of a person in knowing the experiencer? So I'll start with the later part, which is the knowing experience. So the experiencer, as I mentioned earlier, is the aspect of the experience, which is uh, perceiving the experiences. Um, whereas the person is uh, inside the illusion, it is the 
goal directed entity which is uh, which is illusion which is not true so what is the role so what is the role of the that goal directed entity in knowing the uh, what with uh, the part which is true which is which exists uh, so the role is the um, so uh, the role is being the experiencer uh, uh, knowing the true nature as the experiencer and expression uh, himself in, in experiencer as an experiencer question number six in how many ways experiences can be expressed sorry in how many ways experiences can happen um, experiences are continuous um, and they are they're happening uh, all the times in um, in fact the time is inside the experience it's um, inside the illusion uh, so there are infinite ways uh, experiences um, can happen question number seven what causes vibrations in the illusion what causes vibration in the illusion so uh, Vibration, vibrations are the result of the potential uh, uh, and they're the result of the change in the illusion. So that, that vibration inside the illusion is other way around. It's the uh, vibrations are creating the changes, which is uh, forming the patterns and patterns are uh, perceived as uh, illusion. The objects are also layer in the mind, but why are why are they separate from me and appear solid? Objects are also layer in the mind, but they are separate from me and appear as solid. So I'll start with the later part of the question, which is the uh, what are the objects and why they appear solid? Uh, so. Uh, objects are uh, names and forms. Uh, their um, appearance, uh, as the question says, they are appearances. Um, when we look at the true nature of it, it objects were not there in past. Objects were not there, will not be in, in the same form in future. What remains is the uh, the, the true nature. And the reason they are uh, appearing solid is because our perception uh, of the time is in the slice is uh, short enough where the, the patterns are solid, which is leaves the earlier part of the question, which is the um, why why they're separate from me. Um, at the end, uh, me as a human person, um, also a, a memory pattern, um, good memory pattern, uh, and, and objects are also a uh, uh, result of the memory pattern. The reason they are uh, appearing separate, separate is because the uh, one memory pattern, which is object, is perceived through uh, senses, which are another set of memory pattern, um, into uh, the local memory, which is another memory pattern, uh, which is part of this this gold directed body, uh, and because of the senses, the way it is perceived, it uh, appears different and appears solid. Question number nine: What happens to existence when we are not perceiving it? So existence is all that is combines the true aspect and the false aspect the it has got the uh, true aspect which is the experiencer and the false aspect which is the appearance appearances which is the experiences um, because existence is what it is there is never a chance you know um, 
it uh, it is not there uh, it, it is always experiencing itself uh, which is the state of experiencing just double check if I answered it right uh, what happens to the existence when we are not perceiving it uh, so second part there is we are not perceiving it is not right it's we as human never perceive it uh, its existence perceives itself we are the one aspect which is the false aspect of the uh, we are the experiences which is the false aspect and our true nature is the uh, experiencer cool so that answers all, all of that now number 10 which is better evolution or dissolution so evolution and dissolution are uh, dissolution is is one of the state and evolution is the process through uh, st states are are changed through the process of evolution uh, there are different experience experiences that we go through uh, which eventually leads to dissolution uh, but dissolution again it's a uh, it's not the end there is um, the memory at the end which recycles and it, it starts all over again um, as a human person uh, the, there is no end um, in in this process so question is which one is better because there are it's not apple to apple there are two different things um, and the uh, entity goes through uh, that cycle. That's all. Um, thank you, Guruji. Okay, thank you. Very good answers by Kapil. And you get 6 out of 10, which means you have passed the test and you are now in the step number 4 finally. So we are going to discuss these answers a little bit because in many questions he got half marks so that means that he knows he has studied the program but uh, there is a lack of depth there there is a lack of contemplation so far the perfection has not achieved in case of Kapil so my recommendation is to think more to contemplate more to discuss these things more pay more attention spend more time these are my recommendations so now we are going to see what went wrong where and what was right. So first question, the answer was 100% right. The path of knowledge will never augment any knowledge. It will destroy whatever you think is knowledge. So he was right, essentially. And number two, what is the sub goal? He said there is no sub goal, but no, it, there is a sub goal, which is uh, cultivation of the qualities of the seeker without that knowledge is not possible so it was so clearly in the program probably forgot this is totally dependent on who is teaching if you go to the tradition there is no sub goal but here a sub goal has been given because nobody is born with all the qualities you need to develop them number three what is the difference between knowledge and perception he got half marks because he told the definition of knowledge correctly but remember that perception word appears much later in the program that is connected with the illusion. It has nothing to do with knowledge. Mostly in the common language, the perception is taken as knowing I am perceiving an object in front of me and people will say I know there is an object but that is very very inaccurate language. Perception is simply a process in which the senses are involved. Knowledge is also a process, it's something totally different where the interrelations are made, just like Kapil said. This, this uh, question was asked simply to see whether there is clarity about the definitions of the words. So we never use perception in the way others use. We actually do not even use it many times. We use experience. I'm having an experience, we say like this. So number four. How can we say the experiencer is omnipresent when it is invisible? Again, he got half marks. So first thing, again, accuracy of the words. We never say it is omnipresent. Sometimes we say it poetically, but the correct word is non-local. The concept of location or space or place is not applicable to the experiencer. 
that's all we say because the word omnipresent gives you an idea that there are places and there is an experience or a thing called experience are everywhere just like he gave the example of milk and water but no there are no places this is common misconception i don't see it in every place and how can it be everywhere when it is invisible so this all points to a lot of ignorance in the person when they are asking like this but uh, kapil got half marks because he could see the problem in the question question this question that uh, it is not an object don't try to imagine experience as an object which is filling everything in the universe it is not like this sometimes we give an example of the screen which is everywhere in the picture it is behind the character it is behind the background it is behind the foreground so it is everywhere but it is not to be found in the picture it is not the picture so this kind of con- confusion happens when you take the metaphors literally nothing can be said about the omnipresence or location of the experiencer poetically you can say anything once you understand so i am omnipresent yes but behind that is entire knowledge of who am i number 5 what is the role of a person in knowing the experiencer he got half marks again so i want to ask this question in the satsang because very tricky question isn't it <laughs> he was half right about this what is the role of the person he told that yeah, this is false person and so on but probably failed to describe the role of the person i probably said but i could not understand satya is saying experience that cannot be known that is one point yes so probably you mean that there is no role of the person then gram says being the experience no the person cannot be the experiencer raja singh person itself is the experiencer no it is not <laughs> basic mistakes pandurang is saying to destroy the person excellent pandurang gets full marks yes now raja has corrected person is an illusion that is the role of the person to make way <laughs> for the experience self destroy destroy itself purnima is saying person is also experience whose mind is a tool to know the true essence yes that much can can be done isn't it the role of the person is to let go of this concept that i am something real man i saying due to deductive knowledge one will know there is no person yes probably by de- deductive knowledge you mean the subtractive knowledge yes ultimately it will be no there is no person so what remains is the experiencer yes correct rajit is saying to no it's illusoriness right that much can be done you can say that is the rule but you know that it happens like this the person does nothing it is not an agency person is not an agent for even doing this satya singh i mean experiencer cannot be known can only be you are right but the falseness of the person can be known i am not the body i am not the mind i am not this fictional entity called person this much can be known it is known by this non entity something strange and how is that possible only the existing concepts are removed from this person including the concept of person itself so emptiness into emptiness the space in the clay pot dissolves in the surrounding space very beautiful poem in upanishads this breaking of the clay pot is the role a clay pot is the person itself number 6 in how many ways experiences can happen uh, again he got half marks because he said there are infinite ways but no it is not technically correct there is only one kind of experience you remember there is only one kind of experience experience of irreducibles but there can be infinite irreducibles probably got confused there is only one experience as the existence knowing itself in these illusory forms that is the definition of the word experience that which is manifested number 7 what causes vibrations in the illusion so he got half marks here so i want to ask this in satsang is there is there a better answer although he explained nicely is there a one line answer no reason yes keshav is right is this question even right man is saying causeless purnima is saying no cause you all are right pramjit singh binary change binary change causes vibration no the, vib- the definition of the vibration is binary change not cause of it you know do never 
mistake the cause for definition definition is answering the what question and the cause is answering the why question so i think the answers are already there but according to me what i wanted to hear is that the illusion is first and the it, and the vibration is simply an explanation of the illusion the vibration are not caused in the illusion the vibration do not happen in the illusion they are a scientific explanation of the illusion ultimately it is a theory simply a concept to explain away the illusion why this is happening and it is very beautiful theory it explains you know it satisfies the intellect and that, that is the quality of a good theory and it is satisfactory but it is not truth there are no vibrations simply intellectual tool mathematics that's all it is illusion is and then everything is uh, man made you can say human ideas concepts thoughts that's all they never find the cause of vibrations because they are not there and moreover there is no cause of illusion also it is me i am not caused a uh, causal number 8 objects are also a layer in the mind but why are they separate from me and appear solid so again he got half marks majority of the answer half marks so which which shows that there is knowledge but not in depth knowledge so yes we have called the physical world as a layer of the mind but anybody who does not know who has not gone through the program will doubt it no no they are solid they are outside me and mind is something which is inside me isn't it so this question will be asked and it is often asked how is the universe mental <laughs> like that, that's what people say when they hear this idealistic view of the existence and you will see that the advait favors idealistic view although ultimately it says non dualistic but it uh, climbs on the shoulder of idealism a little bit ultimately it will say no materialism idealism nothing is true so he tried to explain kapil tried to explain but um, there has to be a simple answer to this the question is assuming that they are separate from me the question is asking that they they are separate from me so th- there is the problem in the question there is this assumption don't we show you that nothing is separate from you that evidence is given in the program that nothing is separate from me and the problem here is not knowing who is me lack of self realization so th- that person who is asking the question is still thinking i am the body and yes things are separate from the body that is true <laughs> but they are separate from the body but they are not separate from me then i saying everything is in universal memory separation is illusion everything is experience very good answer yes so they saying i am the existence everything is me yes now he was stuck on this appear solid and all you know those words are there simply to confuse you to distract you the main point is whether they are separate from me and and the question itself is saying they appear solid which means they are not solid they appear solid there is nothing there which can be called solid solidity is a perception what kind of perception mental perception apparent solidity is also me so when we inspect the objects there remains nothing but perception of objects and the perception is happening on the same screen which is me so no separation no solidity no separatedness this is the full answer so number 9 and 10 totally right answers he got full marks there and total 6 marks so i'll simply say two words about it for the benefit of others that what happens to the existence when we are not perceiving it we are always perceiving the existence because i am the existence who else will perceive it so he was right we means humans right humans cannot perceive anything i am perceiving humans also including this human which is talking so nothing happens to it and the perception never stops or you can say in correct words the experience never stops because i am the experience i never go away number 10 evolution or dissolution very satisfactory answer here his understanding is complete that there is no difference between evolution and dissolution actually everything is going towards dissolution and dissolution is another illusion nothing is really dissolved simply appears again reappears like uh, the water you throw on your lawn disappears becomes water vapor in the morning again dew drops same water so changing forms of water that's all 
whatever you call as illu evolution simply another illusion so here is the question and answer very good very good uh, effort by kapil and now you can start the experiments of the fourth step and send weekly reports and now we are ready for your questions if any okay there is one question when others perceive it's affecting or causing harm to them so how to deal with such situations so if the person is not asking you to do good do not do good the behavior is showing this that probably the person does not want you to do anything so do not interfere in their matters focus on your own life so that is my point of view that is my you can say advice ultimately you have to decide using your own intellect your conduct in the world the path of knowledge does not recommend anything usually but my personal advice is not to deal with people at all if it is not necessary don't do it Pranjit is saying I still get emotions even though I know at the same time I am in awareness. So what is your question? Everybody gets emotions. Okay, he is saying is it good to have emotions during awareness? I mean anger or something else. It is not good and it is not bad. It is what it is. An illusion, activity of the mind. Whatever is appearing, becoming a witness is being in awareness. So ultimately good and bad must be decided by the seeker. what is causing harm that will be usually called bad kapil is saying maybe observe the emotion recognize that they come and go and do not stick to you yes simply observe the actions must be performed after proper evaluation using your intellect thinking on it if the actions are impulsive and they are coming from emotions that is also not bad but there will be consequences on the path of knowledge we are very reluctant to call anything as bad because then it will become a command don't do this that means the person has no intelligence to decide what is good and bad but on the path of knowledge we assume that the person has the intelligence to decide so nothing is told we'll end today's satsang here congratulations to kapil we'll meet next time thank you everybody for attending today's satsang